Hello everybody, this is part 5 on how to make a shooter game in Scratch. If you haven't seen the previous parts of the series, make sure to check them out, the links are in the description below. Anyways, in this video, I will finish the shop and make the player able to buy shop items. So let's get started. Right now, uh, we have one item show when we open the shop, and it's this faster firing speed upgrade for the pistol. However, it doesn't really do anything right now, so let's start working on that. Well, first of all, um, I was playtesting my game, and there are some things I want to change right now, so I'll do that first. Uh, first of all, the player can't move back, and many of you guys have told me in the comments below, so I think I'm going to change that. As you see here, I can't go back, so I am going to add that real quick by grabbing an if statement, and he down arrow pressed, then move negative four steps. And the second thing I noticed is that if you shoot bullets out of the machine gun and you switch to pistol, then the bullets shot out of the machine gun switch to the speed of the bullet of the pistol. So the bullets of the machine gun are supposed to be slow, like this. And the bullets of the pistol are supposed to be fast, like this. But if I switch while the bullets are still on the screen, the bullets that are shot uh, move the speed of the pistol. So I'm going to change that. Let's just uh, go to data and then create a new variable. Let's name it speed and make sure to select for this sprite only. Then click OK. And let's drag it in here. So if the gun is pistol, then let's set the speed to 20, which I set over here. Move 20 steps. And if the gun is machine gun, then set the speed to 12, which I said right here, uh, down here. So now take these two if statements out and change speed, I mean uh, move, move 10 steps, or move, I mean uh, change that to move speed steps. So what I did here is that I changed it from making their speed only initialize once when the clone is created, because what I did before is that the clone speed would change while it's moving. So like machine gun bullets would be moving 12 steps, but then I would switch the gun to pistol, and then they would move 20 steps. So now I fixed it by only making their speed change once, and that's when the bullet is created. So yeah, you can now delete this, and now let's try it. So first of all, the player can move backwards, and when the player shoots out of the machine gun, the machine gun bullets are still the same speed, like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now uh, let's make a few more upgrades. So. We have the faster firing speed, but we should think of two more upgrades to put here. So I was thinking of increased damage and maybe knockback. So yeah, let me first um, create the icons for them. And make sure to create them in the same sprite as the icon you made for uh, faster firing speed. So yeah, I'll start making them. Alright, so now that I'm done uh, drawing the costumes, let's start positioning the clones. So first of all, go to data, and then create a new variable. I'll call this uh, clone number, and then select uh, for this sprite only, and then click OK. And let's set clone number to 0 when the clone is created, and then copy this, and then set clone number to 1, and copy this again, set clone number to 2. So since we have uh, three clones here, uh, we set the clone's individual ID before creating the clone. So now that we created them, let's make the clones go to their respective position. So let's grab an if else statement, and then put it around this go to x y block here, and put it back. And let's grab a equal sign, and grab a clone number, and let's put zero here. So uh, clone number zero would be equal to this one right here. The faster firing speed upgrade. And let's actually uh, set these clone numbers to 1, 2, and 3. And let's also change these costume names to 1, 2, and 3. So we can just do um, when I start as a clone, then switch costume to clone number. So that's a bit easier. So yeah. 
let's also change the 0 to a 1. And now let's do the same thing for the other two. So if clone number is equal to 2, then let's make it go to the right of the clone number equals 1. Because we want the um, increased damage upgrade in the middle here. So um, let's just change the x to minus, uh, let's say, 20. Maybe actually minus 0 because it's in the center here. And let's grab one more if else statement just to duplicate this and change it to if clone number equals 3, then go to x uh, plus 87. And I think we're good. Let's test it. Press P. And these three show up like this. Now, uh, remember to copy these if else statements and put them into the hide uh, broadcast a message thing. So, yeah, um, change the go to with this. And now we're good when we press P again. These hide like that. We can actually just uh, create a block and just name it um, show hide and then click OK. Oh, whoops. I'll just do it again. And let's just put uh, this whole thing into this block here. And now all we need to do is um, put the show hide into the hide and show um, broadcast. So we only need to change this one here and then we change both in the show and hide. So yeah, let me just test it again. And it looks pretty good. So now for the descriptions, we only have this faster firing speed one. And we have to make descriptions for the other two. So that's where this comes in play here. And this is why I use these mouse X and mouse Y things instead of just um, if touching mouse pointer. So instead of using um, this one, because with multiple clones, you can detect if the mouse pointer is touching each individual clone, but you can't detect if the mouse pointer is not touching the clones. Because um, if we were to do the touching mouse pointer way, then we would have multiple clones, and then they would have like if um, clone number equals to one, and then uh, touching mouse pointer like this, and then like copy like this two and three. And we would have it like this. But however, um, let's say the mouse pointer is touching clone number two. However, um, it's not touching clone number one, so then the description would be equal to zero, and the zero would um, override the description being to two. And uh, we could create like multiple variables and make them act as flags to detect if the mouse pointer is touching any of the other clones, but I think uh, this way is easier, and since the icons are square, so that makes it like a lot simpler. So in this case, I would stick with this one. So yeah, let me just delete these and replace this with this. So now let's find the mouse X and mouse Y values for um, the second clone in here, the middle one. So now just um, duplicate this and then put this set description to zero back to the else. And let me see the X and Y values. And um, by the way, you can see the X and Y values of your mouse pointer uh, right here. So yeah, um, right now, this would be negative 28. So mouse X has to be greater than negative 28 and less than uh, 28. So if the mouse X is in that range, then the description should show like this. And now the mouse Y ranges are the same. So yeah, that's good. And for clone number three, which is this one, let's um, copy this again, put the description to zero back to there. And since uh, clone number three, this one, and clone number one, uh, this one, reflect across the Y axis, like in the middle right here, um, these mouse X values should be the opposite of each other. So I just make this uh, greater than uh, 115, actually uh, greater than, yeah, 61 and less than 115. Since I need to make the x values uh, opposite and switched, so yeah, this should work like this. Cool, so now let's uh, set description to uh, 2 and 3 for these two. And now let's uh, make the descriptions for the two other icons. So go to your description, um, I think it's this one for me, yeah. 
and let's create the different descriptions for the icons. So um, I will copy this. Oh, whoops, I just deleted it. Um, I'll copy this. And I will edit this one to increased bullet damage. So increased bullet, I think the lowercase b, damage. And I'll move this to the center here. Yep. And I will change the cost to like maybe 100. Move this to the center. And then I'll duplicate this again and make this increase knockback. Center this. And change this cost to like uh, 75. So now since the description switches the costume to the variable description, then this should work like so. Yeah, so you can now see their descriptions. I'll also just um, add a brightness effect when you hover over the icon just to make it more interactive. So I'm going to set brightness effect to, let's say, um, maybe 20. And then uh, grab an if statement. And then grab an equals and a clone number. And then let's change this to, let's say, 1. So when our mouse is in this area over here, we only want uh, clone number one's brightness to change. So put this into here, and then let's test it. So yeah, the brightness changes. Now let's set um, brightness effect to zero in the else, the bottommost one here. And now, yeah, we have the brightness effect change in clone number one. I'm just going to play around with the number here because it doesn't look so good right now. So maybe 5 or 10. Yeah, I think 10 is good. So now uh, duplicate this and then set these to 2 and 3. So now we have the brightness change for all three of them. It's a really subtle one. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but yeah, the brightness changes. So yeah. So now we want the player to be able to buy the items. So let's just create a new variable and name it cost. And then click OK. And now let's just set cost to uh, zero when we initialize it in the flag. And now let's set the variable cost to whatever cost it is in the description. So when we hover over this one, the cost would be 50. So set the cost to 50 when we hover over that icon and set the cost over to uh, 100 when we hover over this one. So, yeah. And set the cost to 75 when we hover over this one. And then let's just set it to zero if we're not touching anything. So yeah. So now we wanna detect if the mouse is down. So um, grab an if statement and then go to sensing, grab a mouse down. Now let's go to data and then change um, cache by cost. So when the mouse is hovering over this icon, which is the faster firing speed, the cost is set to 50, as you can see here, right here. And then um, when the mouse is clicked, then we have to change the cache by the cost here. And yep, it doesn't really work right now. So um, let's also go to operators grab a multiplication, and then multiply cost by negative 1, and put it in here. So yeah. Now, as you see, you can hold it down, and then the cost just goes down, like, a lot. So, um, go to control, and then grab a wait until block, and then grab a not, and grab a mouse down. So, uh, as you see here, um, Okay, let's just first set the player's money to like 100, so set cash to 100. And now, um, when you click on it, it changes the cash by cost times negative 1, which is not decreasing. That's sort of weird. Um, Alright, let me see. Oh yeah, uh, you need to put the mouse down check um, inside of the if clone number equals 1, because it triggers 3 times. 
So yeah, it checks if uh, clear number equals one, and then it does it. So yeah, this should work now. Um, we have hundred dollars, and then when we click on it, then we should have fifty. So yeah, it works. Now uh, let's have one more check. So grab an if statement, and then put it inside the if mouse down, and then grab an operators, get an or, and then grab a greater than, and then grab a equals then, and go to data. And then grab a cache and put these into the left side of these two. And now let's drag costs onto the right side of these two. So after the user clicks on the icon, it checks if their cache is greater than or equal to the cost. Otherwise, they can't buy it. So let's just uh, test. Let's um, show our cache variable. And when we buy it one more time, then it has zero. And now the uh, user can't buy anymore, even when I'm clicking on it. So yeah, it works. Now let's uh, copy this and then paste it inside of the other two if statements. So let's drag this into here and then copy this again, drag this into here. So now uh, when we buy the increased bullet damage, then the user has zero dollars. And when we buy the increased knockback, then the user has $25. So yeah, I will uh, wrap up my video here. And in the next video, I will definitely uh, make the player be able to benefit from the upgrades. And uh, yeah, after that, we can focus more on the gameplay. So yeah, if you like the video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe too, if you haven't already. So that's it. See ya.